Heart with joy, now in his loving kindness I shall say. 
Welcome everybody out to the house of the Lord today. It's a pretty good crowd out. Still missing a lot of people. You're definitely missing the bass player. I just figured that out. Bobby Ramsey's more valuable than than we realize. Uh, going to uh, go into the announcements. We've got a, f a few here that I want to to get out of the way before we go any farther. Uh, the first one is uh, 
the church has decided, as we've been talking about for a couple of weeks, to do a backpack drive. And I've been kind of speeding through that, but it's getting closer to time, and I'm wanting to make sure that everybody understands what we're doing. We're, we're wanting to give away 200 backpacks to the, the kids uh, that need in our community during the next food drive. So right now we've had the backpacks donated, but uh, I'm asking that everybody go ahead with the supplies and start bringing more of those in. We did an inventory this week, and there's still quite a few supplies needed. Uh, and if you don't have time to go out and do the shopping, if you'll just bring Melissa or me the, the money, we'll make sure that that's put towards getting those supplies. And then on the 31st, we'll uh, pack the backpacks up that night and have them ready for the food drive on, on Tuesday. Uh, for the ladies auxiliary on the 18th, that's being canceled. Uh, on the 31st, we are still going to have our spaghetti uh, fundraiser for Robin Ramsey to help with expenses for her uh, going to Vanderbilt. Also, I should have the t-shirts uh, here by next Sunday. We should. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet out here uh, in the vestibule that's got... Uh, the sizes and if you will just put your name and what size you want those are not going to be a charge for those just a donation only and the same for the spaghetti dinner uh, donations only and also for that we are asking that people bring desserts and if you have a special dessert that you can do that's individually wrapped that would be great too because we'll have a lot of to-go boxes we're expecting uh, for that that event so is there any other announcements anything i missed before we go on service morning service uh, be the youth Sunday and if you uh, don't have someone to cover your class or or one of the the jobs see Scott he'll help help line that up and was there something else over here next Sunday we'll resume with our regular uh, services 10 o'clock Sunday school and uh, church at 11 so we'll go back to normal next week and wednesday night this week still still on seven o'clock all right we got the announcements out of the way this time oh, there'll be a deacon's meeting right after chat wasn't in the bulletin Clyde. i don't know if i could announce that <laughs> i'm sorry you have to start getting with me no deacon's meeting today uh right after church this morning all right anything else all right, it's time to go before the Lord in prayer, and we, we do have uh, a lot to be in prayer about. As I mentioned, we have several out today, a lot of sickness in our church. Um, is there any spoken request? Let's remember this. Remember these requests. Any other spoken request? Remember this. If there's no other spoken request, uh, is there any request? It's unspoken by just uplifting your hands. Hands up all over the building, a lot of requests. Let's remember these. If everybody can and will, let's gather around the altar.
I'll ask uh, Scott Bradford, if you will, to, to lead us in prayer. Uh, before we uh, turn it over to Kevin, does anybody have a song or a testimony? Any other testimonies or anybody have a song? testimonies. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. Good morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Good to see each and every one in the Lord's house. And to have all of our visitors with us today. Michaela's mom and dad's with us. Good to have you all. And I appreciate you coming. And uh, we got others, if you're visiting with us, uh, good to have you too. I believe everybody else is, is part of us. So uh, uh, appreciate the beautiful day the Lord has made and a and, uh, beautiful morning this morning, wasn't it? It sure was. I hope you take the time to, uh, to notice, to notice things like that because it's... Uh, I mentioned it Wednesday nights. It, uh, I believe sometimes we get too busy and we we don't notice the, the sunrise or the sunsets and the stars. Uh, it's uh, it'd be good for you to for start noticing stuff like that because it's uh, it's medicine. It's medicine. I promise you. But we do. We get too busy and and we uh, we we don't take the time to. To just stop and and see the beauty that God is blessing with, blessing us every day. Other blessings that we're missing out on just because we're not we're not paying attention. We got our mind on maybe our problems and what's going on, and and uh, we're we're missing out on, on a lot of good things. That if we just slow down a little bit, and uh, I'm speaking by experience. All right. 
as the appetizer. <laughs> Turn with me in Isaiah 40. Uh, it's very, very familiar scripture. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Stand with me the reading of God's Word today. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of His understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word today. And God, we pray that you would just give us every thought and every word that needs to be said. You know each and individual heart today. You know the needs. And I pray, God, that you would just direct our uh, mind, Lord, and our lips today. And God, Lord, that you would just uh, speak, Lord, to your people today. And we love you and we thank you. If there be one here, Lord, that, that, that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you'd save them today. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Begin to think about uh, what's on my heart today is, is wait, wait on the Lord. It's worth the wait. Wait on the Lord. It's worth the wait. I believe the hardest thing for us to do is wait on the Lord. You've heard me say many a time. I believe we deal better with the answers of no when God says no better than we do wait. We're very impatient people. We want things just like that. We want it done yesterday. When we are in uh, maybe a fi- find ourselves in a problem, we we get anxious, and that that the anxious feeling. Uh, causes us to feel an urgency of, of having something right now. Something has to be done right now. But the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, uh, Psalms 27, 14, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There is benefits in waiting on the Lord. I believe sometimes that uh, we, we maybe not realize what God is doing behind maybe the situation, but it is, it is needful for us to wait on the Lord. And it teaches us, and it gives us the patience that we need. Romans 5, some more scripture. It says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you got peace with the Lord, you can wait. When you don't have peace with the Lord, it's hard to wait. It says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now notice here, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, glory in trouble. How can you glory when everything's turned upside down in your life? How can you glory? How can you have peace when, uh, when, when your world is turned upside down? When all you see is trouble? When all you see is adversity? How can you glory in it? You can glory when you've got peace with God. Peace that passes all understanding. There's examples of Job. Job praised the Lord when it all uh, was, was, was going south. When he lost everything that he had, all of his possessions, his maid servants, his man servants, and uh, uh, his cattle, his possessions, his children. The Bible says, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. But he praised the Lord. He praised the Lord. 
That doesn't make sense to the unbeliever, does it? How can you praise the Lord when things, when everything you've worked for, everything that you, that you possess is taken away from you? Your you, you bone of your bone, the flesh of your flesh, your children are, are gone. How can you praise the Lord? Job realized that it was in God's hand. It was out of his hands. He said, Naked I came into this world, and naked shall I return. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Satan said, Well, touch his, touch his flesh, and he'll curse you. Didn't work taking all of his possessions away. Job, uh, uh, Satan was, was, was wanting him to, to get bitter at God. A lot of people gets bitter at God. I asked God one time, I saw a lady get bitter at God because one of her, her daughters uh, overdosed on drugs. The lady got bitter at God. And I, I'd never saw this. First time I'd ever saw anybody get bitter at God. And I was going home from that funeral and I said, Lord, why does people get bitter at you? And the Lord spoke to me. I believe you can ask God questions. He'll answer you if you listen to Him. The Lord said, a lack of understanding of me. You say, how can I understand the Lord? You might not understand everything He's doing, but you've got to understand that He's just. You've got to understand that He, he is altogether lovely. He does all things well. He never makes a mistake. Amen? You're not a mistake. The, your situation is not a mistake. Nothing touches us unless it goes through his hands first. And I believe Job understood that. This is in God's hands. I'm praying for God's will. When you pray for God's will in your life, you need to trust him then. Right? Why should we pray God's will in our life and then when something happens, and maybe God's got a plan through that, then why question God and say, God, I, I don't know why you're doing this. Why, what, what have I done? What have I done to deserve this? Why do I have to go through this punishment? Did it ever dawn on you that it might not be punishment that God is using you to get glory out of your life? That's what our purpose is in life. Your purpose in life is not to, to, to be rich and make a lot of money and, and, and have a lot of fame and wealth and all this. Your purpose in life is for God to get glory out of your life that others may see Jesus in your life. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Does that make sense? I believe sometimes we got our priorities wrong and it's all about us. It's all about us being in a comfort zone. It's all, uh, all about us being, uh, uh, having what we want and, 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 and prospering and doing all these things. But if God, if you're not allowing God to use you and God's will to be done in your life, you're missing the mark. And here's the thing, you're miserable too. We've all been out of God's will, right? It's a miserable feeling, ain't it? But you know what? I've noticed this. When you get your mind off yourself and get it on God, and you, you get to look into the Lord and say, God, in spite of what I'm going through, in spite of how I feel and how bad it hurts, God, if somebody can come to know you through my situation, Thy will be done. That's what Jesus prayed. He prayed his heart. The Bible tells us to make our prayers and supplications be made known to the Lord. God wants to know what's on your heart. He already knows before you ask him, but he still wants you to tell him on your account. But Jesus said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, he prayed his heart because he is in the flesh. He was, in, he was as much man as he was God, but he was as much man as he was God, right? As much God as he was man, right? And so he prayed, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. In spite of what I want, God, I want what you want. Whatever your will is for my life, I want you to have your way. 
Now God answers. We, we read in His Word where He spoke the Word and the centurion servant was, was healed in the self-same hour. I mean, he had the faith. He said, I'm not, wor- I'm not worthy for you to even come under my roof. But he said, I tell people to do this and do that, and they do it. But he said, just speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. The Bible says, in a self-same hour, the man was healed. Jesus said, never have I seen so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Well, will you listen, God is still able to speak the word. He's still able. But if he don't, if he don't right now, we need to wait on him. I've had people tell me before, you know, when I was facing a storm, I, I had a man tell me one time when Corbin was born with cancer that if we'd have the faith that, that, that it, would, uh, it would go away and he wouldn't have to take any treatments and all that would be over with if we had the faith. I struggled with that. I struggled with that. I was like, Lord, uh, this is taking a while. And Lord, is it because of my faith? Is it because of uh, 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 my faith is weak or whatever? But I, I realized sometimes man don't know what God, God's will is. Right? That man was just like us. He, 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 uh, sometimes we all get wrong sometimes. But it was God's will for him to go through that for two over two years. But eventually we heard NED, no evidence of disease. But it took two years to get that, get there. And there's a, long, a lot of long nights, sleepless nights, a lot of rough days that he had to face to get there to that point of two years. But eventually deliverance came, Right? Let me say it like this. Job, the ministerial association come by and they put their two cents in worth, his friends, and they said the wrong things. They meant well. I mean, some of them even tried to accuse him, say, Job, you're bound to do done something for this to happen. Job, you might as well just confess that you've done something for this to be brought on. But they were wrong. God had a purpose. Job's latter end was greater than his beginning. And as for God's people, I promise you, your latter end is greater than your beginning. Amen? We might not see things happen the way we want to in this life. I was thinking of people in a nursing home. I just, just sang this morning over there the nursing home and, and, and did devotions and sang and, and, and uh, over here and, and, and I was thinking, you know, these people, a lot of them probably will never get better here. But I'm glad it ain't always going to be this way. Amen? If our healing don't come in this land, it's coming in a better land. And the Bible says if we had hope in Christ in this life only, we'd be of all men most miserable. If this was as good as it gets, it'd be miserable, wouldn't it? But I, we know better. We know the best is yet to come. Amen? The best is yet to come. My wife always said, when it seemed like in, in the toughest times, she'd say, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And it will. By the help of the Lord, this too shall pass. Wait on the Lord. That's the hardest thing for this flesh to do is wait on the Lord. Let me say, if you don't wait on the Lord, you'll make a wrong decision. Whatever the decision is, if you're not waiting on Him and you are hasty to make a decision and you just jump, to the conclusion before God gives you the green light, then you'll make the wrong decision. I've done it. Hadn't you? We have. A lot of times we'll think we know what's best. And all oh, we've prayed about it one time or maybe a couple times. And we, the Lord hadn't answered. So we just go ahead and, and make the decision. And who are we to put a time frame on God? We do, don't we? 
We'll put a time frame. Lord, I need this by the end of the week. <coughs> and maybe we, you know, there is a time frame in it. But God knows that. Trust me. He knows. He knows the time frame. His ways are not our ways. Neither His thoughts are our thoughts. But His ways and His thoughts are higher than ours than the heavens are the earth. I believe He knows what He's doing, don't you? I don't believe I know. I know He knows what He's doing. He's trustworthy. If He's trustworthy to save you, He's trustworthy to keep you in everything that you face. If you've trusted Him to save you, I promise you, He's trustworthy to keep you. Amen? It's not that God saves you and say, okay, you're on your own. No, that's not what grace is all about. God's grace is His unmerited favor. You've done nothing to deserve it, neither will you ever. He loves you. And He cares for you. And through the storms, through these trials, through these tribulations, there's lessons to be learned. You think about it all your life. Push rewind. It's a good time. When you get overwhelmed, push rewind. In your life, and you think about of all the things that God has done in your life, you know, the times that you felt hopeless, kind of like you maybe do right now, and you feel like that God has, has, has forgotten you, and you feel like God's a million miles away. Go back in the times where maybe the doctor said, don't know if he'll live again, or live any longer. Don't know if maybe this, uh, this, uh, this uh, sickness is ever going to, get any better, but God turned it around. Go back to the time that you were lost in sin and God saved you and picked you up out of the horrible pit and, and, and out of that miry clay and set your foot on a solid rock. I don't know about you, but when I, my, when I take my mind back to the night that I got saved, it lifts me up. <laughs> we need to go back there. Often, not just every now and again, but you need to go back there. and You need to think about the change. Your life has never been saved, the same since you've been saved. Since that change. If you can never remember a change, you've never been saved. Amen? If you can never remember a change within... The regeneration of the Holy Spirit of God. The old man is put away in the new man. You put on the new man. He that is in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That change is that new creature. Your mind needs to go back there. And let me say this, when you know you're saved, and you know without a shadow of a doubt, nobody can talk you out of knowing that you know, that you know, that you know that you're saved. That right there will get you through anything and everything in your life. Job had to go back there. I know my Redeemer liveth and I'll see him in the latter days, he said. Wait on the Lord, it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. Of all the things, it says here, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. I, know, I don't know a person that doesn't get faint-hearted every now and again. Even the strongest Christian you know, there's times they get faint-hearted. You know why? Because we're in this old flesh. And maybe there's times we get discouraged, or times we get down and out, and there's times we get overwhelmed. David, a man after God's own heart, said, When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. It's worth the wait. It says, He giveth power to the faint, to them that have no strength, He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait... They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In due time, you'll get your strength. 
Sometimes it's a crawl. But we've got to crawl before we walk. You've got to walk before you run. And you've got to run before you fly. Does that make sense? But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's God's will. It's God's will that you come victorious through this. Whatever you're facing today, wait on Him. Wait on Him. Don't get, don't get faint-hearted. And if you, if you do get weary, trust Him. Call on Him. And He'll give you strength. I was thinking of this. I was thinking when we get to heaven, I believe we're, we're going to realize it's been worth the wait. We wait. We're waiting patiently on the Lord, aren't we? We're watching and praying. I believe we are living in the last days where I believe the Lord is soon coming. He can come any moment now. Amen? He can come any moment. I don't know when He's coming, but I know He's coming. And if it be another 20 years, I'll still be looking for Him. But the Bible is being fulfilled. It sure is. But I believe when we get to heaven, I believe we'll say, boy, it's been worth the wait. Lord, I'm glad, glad I trusted you. I'm glad I accepted you as my Savior. Thankful, Lord, that you brought me to this place. Seen fit to reconcile me back to you. Because that's what Jesus did. He reconciled us back to God. So that we could be where he's at. Amen. I want you to wait on the Lord today. Wait on him. It's worth the wait. Let me say this. When victory comes, when deliverance comes, you patiently waiting on the Lord. That victory in waiting on the Lord is sweeter than giving up beforehand. I've even seen it happen like this in my life. I've got impatient. I've kind of maybe jump to conclusions and maybe kind of just quit praying about things. Hadn't prayed about it, maybe a certain thing in a long time. Just kind of give up on it. Maybe in my actions. We might not have got, gave, gave up maybe in our mind or in our heart, but, but as far as our actions goes, we just quit praying about it, quit thinking about it. Just kind of thought, well, I don't guess it's never to be. And then God eventually answered the the prayer that you prayed a long time ago that you quit praying about. Has that ever happened to you? It has me. Make you feel ashamed, don't it? Victory ain't as sweet when you quit praying about it. But it is. It's worth the wait. It's worth the wait when you trust in the Lord. And listen, there's, there is strength. We need strength. And strength don't come from any other thing in this world but the Lord. But it's worth waiting upon the Lord. That's the message today. Ever have about it? Ever I close? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, God, for your word. And thank you, God, that, Lord, that you know exactly where we're at. And, God, you know the ones, God, that need strength today. You know the ones that needs, needs comfort today. And I pray today, God, that wherever we're at, Pray, God, that you would just meet the needs. Maybe there's somebody here, God, that, that needs answers. They need direction to, to know to make decisions. And maybe they're in the valley of decision. They're at a crossroad in their life. And, and God, it's very important, Lord, that they make the right decision, the decision that you would have them to make. Help them to wait upon that answer. I pray, God, that you would just... Help us, Lord, to pray about everything. Everything that we face, help us pray about it. And seek your face about it. Lord, we love you. Strengthen the brokenhearted, the bereaved.
Lord, those that have lost, lost loved ones, I pray, God, that you would strengthen them as well. Lord, be with each one today, I pray. If there be one here lost under the sound of our voice, Lord, that's lost and needs you, I pray, God, that you would just speak to their heart and help them to realize they cannot make it through life without you. Lord, we love you, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.